Welcome back again to Joe on a boxing. I hope you're having a good weekend. Uh, last night, which was um, May the 13th, Friday, Friday the 13th. Mmm, scary. Uh, yeah, there was a good card on in Italy, in Milan, on DAZN. And on the undercard was a very, very tense fight with an explosive ending between um, Maxim Prodan of Italy. I think he's originally from Romania, but he's, he now resides in Milan in Italy. And uh, Luis Enrique Romero of Venezuela. Um, now, Prodan was clearly the, the star, if you like, the, the house fighter, the guy they, they were grooming for for big things, but he was coming off um, a split decision 10 round loss to Florian Marku back in 2021, that was at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium when AJ got beaten by Usyk, um, so they were bringing him back, and as usual, they didn't want to give him two, two tougher tests, so in comes Luis Enrique Romero with his 10 wins, 6 by KO, Five defeats, one by KO and one draw. So statistically, 10-5 and one from Venezuela. 36 years old. Uh, Prodan is 29. Nah, this guy shouldn't be too much of a too much of a test, should he? We'll just ease Prodan back into you know the scene. Oh, okay, all right, all right, fair enough. It's a common tactic. Now, Prodan. Uh, Prodan, you know, 19 wins, one one defeat and one draw. Uh, very much a come forward uh, pressure fighter. Um, nothing really particularly sophisticated about him. He's not without talent. Boxes a bit, but very much a front foot fighter in that sort of... I, I always think of them as being a sort of B-level European style, like a sort of Avni Yildirim type. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, whereas Luis Enrique Romero... Of Venezuela, very much a fleet-footed, defensive-minded, jab-a-lot mover, a, fl a fleet-footed fighter. Um, doesn't didn't from what I've seen of him, I haven't seen a great deal of him. I've seen a three, four of his fights. Uh, he likes to move a lot. Doesn't particularly enjoy being on the front foot. And Romero, uh, despite having a points win over Jonathan Alonso, which was considered an upset, that was in that was earlier this year. I think it was in March. Um, prior to that, he lost three on the bounce. One of those was to Johan Gonzalez. He lost in five rounds. Then he lost to Angel Johnson, who was a 5 0 prospect. Then Anas Masoudi, Masoudi, 12 0 prospect. So this guy's you know, he's considered a journeyman, at best a gatekeeper. 10 wins, five defeats, one draw. So when he comes, and sure enough, the opening bell goes, Prodan's on the front foot, trying to march him down. Uh, and uh, Romero on the back foot, skitting around the ring, jab, jab, jab. And he's landing enough to win the rounds. And not a great deal changed for the first, uh, for the first, what, five and a half rounds? Because Prodan was always looking kind of ominous, kind of, you know, as if he was, he was trying to find his timing. He favours the left hook strongly, very strongly, does throw the right hand, but doesn't throw it with much, with a great deal of schooling and not a great deal of confidence, but the left hook, he put some meat on that. And Romero, although he is very much a box, box, boxer, lots of movement, move your feet a lot. Um, he, he does hang his hands low, which looks, so it looked kind of ominous, you know, Prodan's getting closer. Maybe if he can time him just once and land that big left hook, um, maybe he'll get Romero on the floor or even out of there. And so it proved in round six because although he was several right rounds behind, I didn't, I, I didn't really score. I mean, I scored it in my head, but I didn't write it down. I definitely had Romero winning this fight, maybe, maybe four one up, you know. Um, but towards the end of round six, Prodan landed, and finally the timing came good. He landed an almighty left hook. He'd been missing consistently, landing the occasional punch, but no no point was Romero badly hurt. But at the end of the sixth round, oh, he landed the big left hook all right. So hard did it land that Romero spun round and landed on his front in a corner. And you thought, well, either he's not getting up from that or if he does manage to get up, he's not going to have much left. Fortunately for him, it was at the end of the round. So... 
odds on. You know what's go you know what's coming next in the seventh round, don't you? Prodan is going to tear after him and unload the full the full gamut of his uh, of his arsenal. Every single punch in the book, he's going to be throwing it with the proverbial bad intentions. And sure enough, the seventh round starts. Romero looks. He doesn't look out on his feet, but he looks stuck. Well, not stuck. I don't know. Really. He did. He did have his his wits about him because he was still moving and he was still still trying to use the ring. And and I don't know whether it was muscle memory, force of habit, or what it was, but he was still looking to looking to get back onto the game plan, looking to frustrate Prodan as he had done for five and a, nearly six rounds, five and a half rounds. But Prodan, in the ascendancy, I'm coming after you. You know, buckle yourself in, because here I come. The only problem was, Romero, who'd barely taken a, a step forward, suddenly decides, I think I'll exchange with him. And he lands a very, very good right hand, which stings Prodan. Prodan bangs, I think it was a right hand, was it? Oh, I can't remember. I think it was right hand. Bangs his chest, Prodan does, and says, oh yeah, yeah is that, that all you got? No. Says, <laughs> says Romero, I've got this for you. And he then chins him with a left. Was it, uh, again, I'm, I might be getting my punches confused here, but he definitely connects. I think it was with a left. It may have been a sort of hook come up a cut or something like that. And Prodan is stung. So suddenly, out of nowhere, the flat on his face Romero, within a minute, has stung Prodan and he launches after him. And Prodan is all over the place and... He's hanging on the ropes. Romero's unloading. And I mean unloading. You know, it's almost like he saved all of his offence for that one opportunity. He fires the lot at him. Prodan ha sagging on the ropes. The ref steps in. Some people think it's the fight over. No, 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 no. Standing count. The rope saved you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You okay? Yes, says Prodan. No, he wasn't. <laughs> so he comes back again. Comes out. And he doesn't, he doesn't back, uh, box well on the back foot at all. So he's going to either try and hold, maybe, or I don't know, maybe take a knee. I mean, do something. But Prodan doesn't, um, Romero doesn't have to go looking for him because there he is. And Romero gets him on the ropes again and unloads absolute living hell. It's worse than the first time. The referee again steps in. Is it over? You know, it is no, another count. And poor old Maxim Prodan is just, you know, where he is, don't know what day it is. You know, he don't know left from right, up from down, black from white. He ain't got a clue. The referee gives him another stand and eight count. Prodan is literally, he's got his back to the ref. He's hanging off the ropes. His arms are on the ropes. And the ref sees the body language and the look of absolute bewilderment and, and stunned amazement on Prodan's face and stops the fight. So it's the seventh round TKO for Luis Enrique Romero. He's 36 years old, come all the way from Venezuela to Milan, beats the house fighter from out of nowhere, from at the end of the sixth round, being flat on his face, out out like a light, you think, gets up. Leo, you know, one punch can change it. One punch can change. They talk about the heavyweights. One punch can change everything. Everything's relative. You know, you can, it, that can be equally true in, in lower weights. And these guys, these guys were um, like middleweights uh, or super welterweights, if you prefer. Um, but that's two, that's two defeats on the bounce for Maxim Prodan. The first time he's been stopped, a shocker. Luis Enrique improves to 11 wins, 7 KOs. Five defeats with one stoppage defeat and one draw. So he is clearly a very dangerous journeyman stroke gatekeeper. I think he's more of a gatekeeper than a journeyman. Uh, he stopped. Uh, he beat on points over eight round Jonathan Alonso early this year. And now he's taken the scalp of Maxim Prodan. Prodan. So he's on a bit of a bounce, is Mr. Uh, Luis Enrique Romero. And no doubt he'll get further work. Uh, against two we don't know but he'll be brought in against the prospect and they better be on their wits because this guy can move box and jab very well but when the mood takes him he can stand and throw some some heavy duty leather as well uh good not a bad fighter he's one of those fighters you think if he'd be managed better had a bigger promotional company more opportunities is is his uh, record definitely wouldn't be as patchy and he, he may be you know he may pick up a few titles here and there as for pro Dan, Back to the drawing board again. He's I think he's twenty nine. I think 
Uh, but I, two bad, two defeats on the bounce. But again, I, I keep saying this, you know, it, defeats don't bother me personally as a fan. I don't ever judge someone on the amount of defeats on their record. You've got to study their record. You've got to go deeper. Um, so Podan can come back if he wants to, if he wants to learn from his mistakes and bite his, you know, bite down on his gum shield, metaphorically speaking, put more effort in, put more work in, maybe, you know, freshen up the training team. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what his situation is, but he needs to do something if he wants to continue because he's sort of plateaued at that sort of fringe European level. Um, and Mr. Mr. Romero, Mr. Luis Enrique uh, Romero, um, yeah, he's on a roll. He's on a roll and might might yet continue. Might yet continue. So, again, this was on the DAZN Italian card. If, you get to, if you've got DAZN, have a look at it because it wasn't a bad little card, that Italian card. Um, so have a look. Did you see this fight? Uh, Leave your comments below if you've got anything you want to say. As always, thanks for your time and uh, catch you later. Speak soon. Bye for now.